So it was a cold fall evening in the year 2000, and I was in the outfield getting ready to catch a high fly ball. And when I looked up in the sky, I couldn't find it, so I started freaking out. I started raising my glove in the air and squinting the best that I could. And see, the center fielder kept yelling to me, you got it, you got it, so I knew it was close. Unfortunately, the ball landed 10 feet from where I was standing, and we lost the game. It was embarrassing because before this, I had caught hundreds and thousands of fly balls from when I was in T-ball to Little League and now in Babe Ruth as a, as a teenager. However, I realized that it wasn't my lack of effort or talent, but my eyesight was starting to diminish. It was after this event that I told my parents, you know what, I needed to see an eye doctor, no pun intended. So the exam, it determined that I was nearsighted and would need glasses for school and contacts when I played sports. And I remember the following week running back onto the baseball field with much more confidence than I had before. You see, my eyesight directly affected my belief and faith in catching that next fly ball. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. And in my situation, without the ability to see, I wouldn't be able to fulfill my duty as an outfielder to catch that ball. And consequently, our team, in a sense, would be more likely to perish or become defeated. But this idea of vision goes way beyond the physical realm. I only use it as an analogy to get to the core truth of seeing and believing in the spiritual realm. In fact, there was a seminary student who was physically blind at our school when we went to school there in seminary, and he had a much greater vision than his colleagues. His plans, his hopes, his future aspirations had greater clarity and perception than all of us around because he was spiritually in tune with the living God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 4, 4 states, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers, and while they may be able to see physically, they aren't able to discern the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ. The lost have chosen that path of darkness, muddying their vision and preventing them from spiritually seeing the majesty of God. The Apostle Paul emphasizes this idea in his letter to the churches at Ephesus when he writes, Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18. So as Christians, the best way for us to have vision, discernment, and clarity is to put our faith and trust in the living God. No longer should we allow the enemy to blur our vision. When we allow him to do so, it's difficult for us to perform at the level that God has intended for us. So let's recap again on my baseball experience. If I didn't get my vision corrected by a physician, I wouldn't have been able to perform in the game. And my poor performance would result in sitting the bench and watching from the sidelines. I would need to be replaced by someone who has the vision and ability to catch a fly ball and also work as a teammate in the beautiful game of baseball. Jesus, he wants us to be his teammate. He has given us all the spiritual gifts to use for his glory. And when we refuse to use them through our disobedience or laziness or lack of concern, God will replace us with someone else. So I want to encourage you today not to sit back and allow the enemy to destroy this world. Oh, prayer and obedience, fellowship, reading of God's word and other spiritual disciplines so that you can be involved in this spiritual batter, battle. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers in the unseen world. Therefore, we are to put on the full armor of God, go to battle, and carry out God's vision and promise to seek and save the lost. 
Blessings to you. Thank you so much for listening to today. You can visit my website at conformtojesus.com. I hope this devotional was an inspiration to you. Thank you.